This is chapter 11, special assignment, if I can get it to go. There we go, sustainable fisheries, introduction to environmental science, supplement to this lecture. So this is like a mini lecture, uh, exploitation of fisheries and the need for management is part of what we're talking about in this assignment. Sustainable harvest versus maximum sustainable yield, two concepts. Sometimes fisheries management takes the ecosystem approach and sometimes it doesn't. But what happens to economies or economics of those uh, villages that require, that depend upon uh, fisheries and uh, their harvest? <laughs> We've seen a worldwide loss of carp fisheries through that fast. So, greater than 80% of the world's commercial catch of fish and shellfish are wild caught most of that fish that you could buy in the store is not grown in a farm or something like that 71 percent of it comes from wild marine populations a tremendous amount when I mean, it's increasing so 10 percent obviously comes from inland fresh waters till the late 1800s there was no effort to manage fisheries or resources Remember, the ocean is vast quite vast the impact has been well illustrated in the north sea this uh, fellow named Peterson developed a method for estimating population size. He would tag, release, and recapture to see how many fish there were. You ended up with over-harvest being the culprit of this decline and some wide fluctuations in the fish. From World War I, there wasn't fishing. Fishing had to stop because we were at war, and that's what our, our uh, uh, sailors were doing. After the war, we'd come up with new ways of catching fish sizable increases in catch. So the idea of sustainable harvest. I've seen this graph before. You see the, uh, the K uh, uh, carrying capacity graph, the one on top. Uh, and then the one below is a little bit new. We'll talk about that in just a second. So central to fishery science is this idea, a logistic model of population growth. Maximum sustainable yield is really what fisheries harvest, fishery science is looking at. This intermediate sized populations, this idea of the K one half, that's where populations have the greatest capacity to grow and the ability to produce the most har harvestable fish per year. So that's the sweet spot. That's what the sustainable harvest, maximum sustainable yield tries to, to shoot for is when fish populations are at that maximum growth or at that top exponential growth. So species are harvested at a rate equal to that annual growth rate. Basically, the production of new individuals just offsets the mortality represented by the harvest. But they kind of forget about year class. You have to have young and old to keep a healthy population. Higher rate of population increase, the higher, the more, the faster you can harvest. That's the maximum, that's the, the uh, idea of maximum sustainable yield. But once again, it ignores the ecology and the biology of these systems. Population that has a high rate of population growth can be difficult to manage. Species lose much of their production, not due to harvest, but due to <clears throat> other factors, density independent factors. So management objectives reduce that waste by taking all the individuals that otherwise would have been lost to natural mortality. So, Pacific sardine population is an example of uh, a crash. Uh, in the 1920s, uh, there was not a lot of uh, catch, catch per thousand tons, and you can see it increased greatly in the 1930s and 40s. And then declined, not because we'd lost our taste for sardine fish, sardines, but because we'd overfished it. Overharvest caused population collapse. The species has not recovered from it. Basically, the age structure shifted to younger age classes, and they could not support the, uh, uh, the growth. Two consecutive years of El Nino induced reproductive failure, and the population has been small ever since. So sustainable yield requires a detailed understanding of the population dynamics, what's going on with that fish species. That intrinsic rate of growth is a function of that age-specific birth and mortality rates. Currently, there are problems with these approaches to maximum sustainable yield. You might figure that out. 
First of all, you don't adequately consider the population parameters. What's the sex ratio of the fish? What's the survival at certain age classes of the fish? Those sorts of things. And the data are difficult to obtain. Fishery science has uh, uh, largely been in the past, although it's not anymore, uh, limited to basically what the fishermen came up with. Remember this idea of common property, the tragedy of the commons. Well, the ocean is the ultimate commons. I mean, outside the 12-mile limit uh, of a uh, country's territorial waters, anyone can do anything they want, essentially. Uh, nature fisheries resources make it so that everyone uses it as each sees fit. So over-harvest is going to be hard to control. There is this underlying economic infrastructure. A lot of countries rely tremendously on fisheries for their uh, economy. So look at the ecosystem approach. I think this is an image of bycatch. These are species that are actually not wanted. Um, well, maybe they are. I'm not sure. It's hard to tell. Waste is encouraged in the current approach to maximum sustainable yield. Catching more. Population, population is considered a single biological unit. In other words, it's not connected to all the other things out there um, that it influences it influence it. Fish stocks are managed to bring in a maximum economic return with little regard for the population of behind. Or in this case, I think some of these fish are simply caught as bycatch. They're just uh, incidental caught and they get disposed of. A lot of interesting industrialized harvest methods. You have uh, these big purse seines, uh, these long lines where they actually will drag, they'll have a one boat to dragging uh, a big long net back to the other boat. Uh, trawls where they haul uh, uh, straight from, from the middle part of the water. Um, Midwater gill nets, you can see all this bottom, they actually will drag trawls along the bottom of the ocean and whatever they come up with, they dig this through corals and it does all kinds of damage, same way with dredges. So a lot of industrialized harvest methods, you kind of get the idea. So let's look at one of the greatest fisheries in the world. First publicized by Cabot at the turn of the 16th century, 500 years ago. Catches remain stable from that period till about uh, uh, the 1945 time frame until after World War II. Then we came up with this idea for large factory trawlers where you just go in with these big old purse seines and you harvest, process and harvest the catch there at sea. 1997, the North Atlantic cod fishery collapsed. It's a huge industry, huge economic boon for many parts of, well, the uh, uh, cities and towns around the North Atlantic on both sides of the Atlantic. Fisheries controlled by the United States followed a similar trend. Ecological, economic, and social disasters what happened because communities depended upon this fish, these fish. The economy of New England fishing villages was destroyed, and it hasn't recovered after 20 to 40 years. So the northern cod uh, uh, fishery collapsed in 1976. Uh, the north gulf cod back uh, looks about 1992-93. Eastern Scotian shelf cod, <clears throat> all, it's all gone, basically. Used to be cod was the only fish you could buy in the store. <clears throat> now you can't find it, although cod is coming back. Yeah. Slowly. So you take an ecosystem approach. These are the uh, various levels of the ecosystem that you might be looking at. Shifting to lower and lower trophic levels as those higher up, the uh, uh, cod is like the top fish there in the upper right hand corner, overfished. So the top predator decreases and those prey, herring, <clears throat> sea urchin, lobster, those populations increase dramatically. So what are fishermen going to do? Well, they may focus on those species that are increasing dramatically. Sounds like Easter Island all of a sudden all we're left with is rats. Industry has shifted to lower and lower trophic levels as those higher up are overfished, <clears throat> and those populations decline. So spiny green sea urchin, it's a dominant herbivore of kelp beds, prey of lobsters, crabs, and seabirds, we eat those now apparently, periwinkle, which eats green algae, and rockweed, those are the things that we've shifted to eating. So these are the questions for this particular assignment. Post your answers to the Assignment 11 Sustainable Fisheries Dropbox. How have top predators been eliminated? 
What percentage of the world's supply of the world's fish population shellfish is wild caught? What does the maximum sustainable yield concept mean? What happened to the economies of New England fishing villages? And after the cod population decreased, which three populations increased dramatically? All right. Very good. Enjoy.